Congratulations on Almost Paradise, Mr. Dean. An intriguing look at the drug war told through the prism of my home country, the Philippines. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> uh, that's true. Um, so you made history by shooting an entire American series in the Philippines. Thank you for that. Salamat. Um, so take us from the very beginning. Why create Almost Paradise and why set it in the Philippines? Well, it, 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 it dates back many, many years ago to my honeymoon when, when my wife and I went to uh, Hawaii for, for our, our honeymoon. And I was watching the local news and there was a, a, a story about how the citizens in a small town had captured these drug dealers on their own because they were tired of waiting for the police to do it. Right. And it got me thinking about island justice and island philosophies, island spirituality. And I thought, you know, I'd really love to do a show that takes place on the island. And originally I developed it for Hawaii. And over the years, it never really kind of worked, you know? It felt like we, we've already seen Hawaii Five-0 and Magnum P.I. And, and there was something just wasn't special about it. And my wife and I were talking about it. And, and she asked me why I relate so much to Hawaii and, and, and island culture. And I said, well, you know, because I'm a Filipino. Mm -hmm. And she goes, well, why doesn't it take place in the Philippines? And it was literally like, boom, of course, of course. And the minute we kind of made that decision and started rewriting the script, Gary and I saw, well, now it makes sense. Now, now everything that we were hoping to do ha has a brand new meaning and a, 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 a much clearer vision. You know, as, as I'm sure you know, in the United States, when you talk to the average person about the Philippines, the only thing that they know is Imelda Marcus's shoes right. and Manny Pacquiao being a great boxer. And that's kind of all they know. Yeah. And I've always been surprised when I talk to people about for instance, the amazing resorts in the Philippines that people go, they have resorts in the Philippines? It's like, they have no idea. Yeah. And so to be able to, to make the, uh, the fourth lead character of the show be the Philippines allows us to take an audience to a world that they really know nothing about, that they, they don't know what it looks like, they don't know what the culture is, they don't know who the people are. And, you know, and I think the fun part, and we've been seeing this week after week, is seeing how, how similar we all are, you know, that it's, this isn't an alien planet. Right, you know? that's right. Um, and you're right, you, you hit it on the head with, with saying that the Philippines itself is the fourth character in the show. So that's fantastic. Now, it, it showcases the beauty of the Philippines as well as the ugliness of the drug war or in some cases, sex slavery, right? Yeah, we try, you know, we didn't want this to always just be about the drug war. You know, I mean, he is a former DEA agent, but you know, we have some, age, some episodes that are about kidnappings, some, uh, one, we had one that dealt with uh, the sex trade. We have one that just deals with the con artists. Uh, uh, you know, so there's, there's all kinds of different stories. We really wanted to, to let, the, basically the idea is that our hero is, is trying to, to relax. He's trying to, to, to deal with his own hypertension, but he's chosen to live at this resort, which is kind of, uh, it's kind of honey to the, uh, the, the worldwide criminals who, who come there to vacation. <laughs> right, right, right. So he's constantly sucked into these dramas that he does not want to be part of. And so we didn't really want it to be any one particular type of crime. Yeah. But because he was a superstar working undercover for so many years, uh, he, he understands all kinds of different uh, uh, criminal behavior. And it is his superpower. Uh, but no matter how much he tries to become Jimmy Buffett, he, he's still Jason Bourne. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, you know what? He wanted to, you know, relax and find peace. Yet he bought a gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, let's talk about your actors, your characters. Why Christian Kane? Is that because you worked with him from the librarians? I mean, I've loved him since Buffy or Angel. <laughs> well, this is actually my third TV series with Christian because he was in Leverage first, and then we wrote him apart in in the librarians. And the funny thing is, when I first told him about the script when I was first working on it, I said, you know, it's a shame, Christian, because you would be perfect for this, except for you're too young. Well, luckily for him, it took me 10 years to get it made. And so by the time I was ready to make it, he had, he had grown into the right age. Right. <laughs> but I always had him in my mind. And, you know, Christian, and I have worked together so long and we trust each other. And, you know, that's a big part of when you try to do a, a series is trusting that the actor will understand the tone, can do the comedy, can do the drama. Um, and him trusting that I'm not going to put him into positions that, that make him look bad. 
Yeah. So we have an, we have an enormous amount of trust and, and a shortcut language. You know, when, when I direct, uh, I directed the finale on uh, this year. And you know, when I direct Christian, I don't even have to finish my sentences. And I also, here's the thing. It's cathartic to see people like me represented on the screen. Um, I was thinking, you know, most of, most of the complaints about Asian representation, then the white, is the white knight, right? The savior. It's not the case here in Almost Paradise because the main characters are equally saviors themselves, like the hot and fierce Samantha Richelle as Kai Mendoza, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that the thing that, that it's, it's not that the Filipinos are in trouble and he comes there to rescue them. In right. fact, it's quite the opposite. He's shown there because he's broken. That's why he, he showed up at, in the Philippines in the first place is because he's a broken man. And it's literally through his relationships with these Filipinos that he is able to find some kind of healing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, Manny, you and I met, you know, on, on um, uh, uh, the movie Transit, which was directed by Hannah Espia. Yeah. And it was really around that time that I started to see how much amazing talent there is in the Philippines. Because yeah. honestly, you know, I hadn't really seen that type, that level of cinematic work from uh, Filipino DPs and editors and directors. And, you know, it really impressed me at that time. And, and then I went on to, you know, to get involved with some of that community and seeing the amazing work. So when we set out to do Almost Paradise, I kind of knew something that the rest of the world didn't know. I, I knew that I was going to be able to do a show that has an entire Filipino cast, an entire Filipino crew, that my, my DP was going to be Filipino, my production designer was going to be Filipino, my costume designer. And I knew that they would have a very, very high quality level because I'd been observing how much advancements has been happening in the Philippines. So, uh, you know, a lot of these actors on the show, the rest of the world has never seen. But yeah. within the Philippines, you know, some of, some of them are quite well known, you oh, know. Oh, yes. Like um, Mr. Brent Camino. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or our little girl, Sophia. Uh, oh, you know. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's awesome in there. Um, and, and also, there's also the, the quiet intensity of Arthur Acuna. I love him in this movie, uh, in the series as well. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, we were, we, uh, we were fortunate in that very early on, Christian and I flew to Manila to do casting sessions. And, you know, what was interesting is that almost none of the actors had ever auditioned for anything before. As in the Philippines, it doesn't work that way. They, they all know each other. And they say, all right, you're going to do this part and you're going to do that part. Yeah. And suddenly we had these big casting sessions and these very well-trained, you know, well-known actors were very nervous <laughs> because they didn't <laughs> have to do this before. And, but the difference was is they got to audition with Christian. Yeah. So immediately we could see the chemistry. Yeah. And you know, when Art came on, came on stage with Christian, it was so clear that these guys just were electric together. Yeah. You know, that, that we were immediately like, we have to cast him. Now, you, you mentioned Samantha, who, who I think is kind of the breakaway actor on, on the show this year, but she's actually d didn't have much experience as an actor at all. Um, I mean, she, she, she's, she's known in the Philippines really more for, for her fashion line, you know, in, 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 in jewelry. Um, but uh, uh, we saw a diamond in the rough. Yeah. And immediately, Christian and I were like, oh, my God, th this, this girl has no ceiling if she's really willing to commit and do the work. Yeah. And, and I asked her straight up, I said, are you serious about this? Because we're going to push you. We're going to push you hard. Yeah. And she, she swore she was dedicated and she exceeded all of our wildest expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Mr. Dean, I've, I've heard that uh, the way you, you attack art is fun, right? Art is fun for you. So how did your past projects, Independence Day included, inform you in working on Almost Paradise? Well, you know, to me, you know, I work in, in, in the area of escapist entertainment. And it's an often maligned area in that people will view it as frivolous. You know, very, very rarely does escapist entertainment win Oscars or, or get great reviews right. uh, or Emmy Awards. Yeah. But, you know, the reason why escapist entertainment exists is because sometimes that's exactly what you need. Right. And, you know, I think in a time like now where we're all dealing with such a, a real horrible situation that every citizen of the world has to, has to deal with, it's nice to have an hour where you can escape. Right. It's nice where you can go away. And, and I think whether it was Independence Day or Stargate or the librarians or Leverage, it's what we always tried to do is to, to give you an hour a week where you can forget all the stuff you have to deal with. Right. All, right. all the things that are difficult in your life and just go away to someplace else. You know, sometimes like Stargate, it's another planet. 
Yeah. Or in Almost Paradise, it is another world. For most people, the Philippines is another world. That's right. You know, I have to tell you, I have to be honest. I haven't even been to Cebu, and I'm originally from the Philippines. (laughs) So that's my first first visit. Well, with 7,000 islands, I mean, how could you visit all the... I mean, people have no idea. Yeah, like Filipinos know, but outside, they don't realize there's 7,000 islands in the Philippines. Yeah. You could spend your whole life in the Philippines and never see all the islands. <laughs> right, right. So, so you work with ABS-CBN, right? My home away from home. Uh, you work with the, with the station, with the show, right? With the network. Um, and I know you hate being political or you really don't want to be political, but what do you think of my home away from home, ABS-CBN, shuttered by the current administration in the Philippines? Well, it, it, look, I think, you know, I think back of some amazing moments that happened uh, with abs and the role that they've played in, in the culture and, and, and what they've done for the Filipino. And I think that they're important. Yeah. I think that they're loved. And I think whatever the political situation is, it has to get resolved. Yeah. And ABS has to be back. Right. It's, it's, it's a part of the culture, you know, especially now during, during the lockdown, you know, the Filipino is looking for information. Yeah. They want to know when it's safe. They want to, you know, and, and they've trusted ABS to give them that information. Yeah. So, you know, it is my, it is my hope. It is, it is my belief that it will happen. You know, that, that whatever these conflicts with the current administration that exist, that they get resolved in a way that is productive for everyone involved. But the most important thing is that ABS gets to turn the lights back on and as soon as possible because the Filipino needs it. Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much for that. Now, going back to Almost Paradise, what can we expect? Are we getting season two, I hope? Well, we'll find out fairly soon, I think. <laughs> um, uh, we, we all want to do it, you know. It's just, you know, it's a, just a question of uh, whether enough people watch it and, you know, uh, you know where, uh, uh, you know, what, what the data shows. You know, the two important things in the United States is how many people watch it on WGN, and even more importantly, how many people... You know, Amazon has been an enormous partner for us, and and you know the uh, the information that we gather by by uh, sales on Amazon has been enormously helpful. That the entire reason I'm able to bring back leverage is because we had had an enormous amount of downloads on Amazon, and the people at Amazon said, "What's going on there?" So yeah. you know, we encourage everyone who wants it, uh, you know, watch us on WGN and go buy the downloads on Amazon. And the more people we get on our side, the better chances we are of getting to come back. That's right. So, so here's my thing. What is in the Philippines besides it's part of your culture as well? Um, what, what keeps you going back there? Well, I think, I, I think it is a magical place. You know, I think that, you know, one of the things that, that surprises people when they go to the Philippines is how welcoming Filipinos are. You know, you go a lot of places in the world and there's a kind of a, a shut off attitude or a, you know, Filipinos, they, they invite you into their home. They want to make you dinner. They want to, you know, it's, it's a very loving culture. Yeah. And I think that uh, uh, more than ever, our world needs loving cultures. Oh. And the more we can expose that uh, uh, and, and make that infectious, let's let that be the next pandemic. Let's, let's have a loving culture infect the world. I, th- I think we'd, we'd do a lot better with that. That's right. Filipinos have the joie de vivre. Right, yeah, we have exactly. for life. Um, and if you I know, see one, if I see one more lechon in the show, I will scream. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you hungry, doesn't it? <laughs> right. All right, so Manny, all right, Manny, I have a question for you. Yes. Have you ever eaten the balut? Of course. Um, <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to eat balut. Uh, when I came back, I ate it because now they have a new hybrid one where the chick is really small. <laughs> <laughs> so yes I, I, could, I, I couldn't bring myself to it I have to admit to you I couldn't bring myself to it <laughs> what, about, what about binuguan pork's blood can you eat that yeah, that, yeah that's good <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy about that um, so my last question Mr. Dean um, how are you keeping up your spirit during the pandemic well you know in a way I'm really fortunate in that we are so busy trying to get the show finished in time to be on the air. I'm so, my time is so filled with just getting the shows finished in time for them to go on the air, yeah. that it doesn't give me a whole lot of time to be um, reflective on what we're, you know, 
what we're facing. Uh, uh, so in, in, in a way, you know, that type of ignorance is bliss. You know, right, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much again, Mr. Dean. It's always nice talking to you. So and good, good luck you. and congrats on um, Almost Paradise. And I can't wait to see the rest of the season. Just wait, four more episodes left. You got to catch okay. them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Take and care. good luck on everything. Bye-bye.